Hi, and welcome to the book lab. I'm Bjorn and this is a new uh, series where I cover my great books list. This is a list that I've been keeping for uh, five years now and it's based on like the last 12 years of reading over 500 non-fiction non books that have been recommended by thought leaders and just uh, exceptional individuals for, uh, that, that I admire. I've read all these books and I've compiled a list in several ca categories. In this video I'm going to cover the category of human uh, nature, behavior and psychology and I have a bunch of books here. Um, that we're going to talk about <laughs> and most of these I also have full reviews of that are linked in the description below. First out is The Denial of Death. This book really had an impact on me. Uh, we all know that we are gonna die someday and that's a predicament uh, unique to the human animal but what kind of psychological implications that that terrible knowledge have. This book is written by Ernest Becker and this book also won the Pulitzer Prize in 1974. Uh, the reason this book is on my list for me is because when I read it, it was quite early in my reading journey. It had a profound impact on me and I also found out about other thinkers that I wanted to read up on. This book uh, got me to read Kierkegaard, Nietzsche, a lot of other books that had a big impact on my uh, literal journey and just my development as a human. I think it's a great, great book. This book is for you if you want to trigger an existential crisis, if you love to think about the big questions in life, and if you're not afraid of adding tons of uh, new books to your reading list. Uh, this is something, it's not the easiest read, but it's a good book well worth picking up. The second book on the list is Behave, which was a phenomenal book until it got trumped by his latest book, which is Determined. This book actually came out last year and became my favorite book of the year, actually. Uh, Determined, A Science of Life Without Free Will by Ro uh, Professor Robert M. Sapolsky. Named the best book of the year by the Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal. Uh, I can agree with that. This book is the conclusion of his uh, life work in uh, biology. And it comes to the natural conclusion that free will is just an illusion. It can't possibly be that we humans have any kind of free will. And he breaks down why that is in this book. And it's a quite uncomfortable read. It's a challenging read, uh, but you should read uh, challenging books because it's like going to, uh, to, to the gym, but for the brain. I also love books like this that just combine a lifetime of experiments, research, and we just get this for like a 10, 20 bucks uh, combined and it, all the conclusions from a life of studies. So this book is recommended for anyone interested in uh, human behavior and also for people who don't shy away from challenging books. And you want to be one of those people. Where's this book? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, I can't find it in my <laughs> not so well sorted library. Uh, it's just a mess. It's just books everywhere. Uh, but oh, uh, but it's Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. This book is uh, one of the big classics. It's quite short. It's a thin book, and everyone should read it at least once. I reread it uh, last year, and I used to see if it belonged on the list and sure it did. He is a Holocaust su uh, survivor and he was also a uh, psychologist and in this book he talks about how it was in those concentration camps and it's often at the extremes. This is at the extreme of human suffering and the extreme evil uh, that we can most clearly see what's important in life. The lessons from this book has had an impact on millions of people around the world and if there is one book on this list that you should read, and even if you're not an experienced reader, reader, then pick this book up. This is a book for you if you want a short and gripping book that will change your life. And it will also lead you to some insights around how, it, how you can stay human in an inhuman situation. The next book is Flow by Mihaly, Shinseng Mihaly. Uh, it was so weird when I put out my video review of this book and I actually have reviews of most of this book uh, in links in the description below. Uh, he actually died on that day which was uh, a sad event because he had, had, a, had a big impact on my life. 
uh, because the more time you spend in flow, this state of uh, enough challenge uh, to be not be bored, a state where time uh, ceases to exist, basically, where you feel light and creative. This book uh, talks about that state and all the science around it. And basically, the more time you spend in a flow state, the more fulfilling your life will be. And this is the psychology of optimal experience, which flow claims to be. So learning how you can get more flow states out of your everyday life, at work, uh, in, with your, in your family situation, at your spare time, the better life you will have. This is a book for anyone who feels stuck and frustrated in everyday life. Anyone who looks to increase their baseline happiness, or if you're just interested in, what, in the ingredients that uh, you should put into the soup if you want to make a soup that is a good life. <laughs> Worst analogy ever. And then we have another one. Oh, this is a favorite of mine. Uh, Robert Greene's The Laws of Human Nature. It's a thick book. Uh, it's the number one book, I think, if you want to learn uh, about why people act like they do, even the good, the good stuff and the bad stuff. He's a master of dark psychology. Uh, he has written books like The 48 Laws of Power, The Art of Seduction, Mastery, which is another book about how to become a master in your craft. This book is his magnum opus. Even if you're a new reader, and this is a quite thick book, it's one of the most accessible ways uh, if you want to look into human psychology and learn about human behavior in a good way. It will also put a lot of new books on your reading list, which I love about his books because he cites so many other sources. It's a book if you want to know why people act the way they do. And then we have a classic. <laughs> Uh, Nobel Prize winner in economics, uh, Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow. This is uh, a landmark book, first of all, and it's also a great book uh, for anyone who thinks they are a rational person. This will show you that you're probably not, and you will learn about heuristics and uh, cognitive biases in a good way. A monumental book, not the easiest one to read, but probably a book that you get more value out of than reading 10 other books. Thinking Fast and Slow is on my great books list. So now for something completely different. The True Believer by Eric Hoffer. Thoughts on the nature of mass movements. In this book, Eric Hoffer explores the temptation to submission in authoritarian regimes. It's a landmark book as well. Uh, if you want to understand why people want to escape from freedom, and if you want to understand why people are pulled towards aut authoritarian systems, then this is a book you definitely should read. It's one of those books that I read and finished and then started to read again once I turned the last page. It's, uh, it's that good. Uh, definitely a must read for anyone who wants to find out about what makes humans tick, even if they tick in a kind of perverse uh, fashion. And the last book on the list, The Righteous Mind by uh, Jonathan Haidt, Why Good People Are Divided by Politics and Religion. Uh, the Righteous Mind brings some really challenging topics to the table about uh, morality, politics and religion, and it shines a light on the um, miracle that humans are able to cooperate at all and why we often fail to do so. It also explores why conflict is inevitable in the moral landscape. This is a brilliant book. If you have a book club, this is one to read because it will spawn a lot of good discussion. And if you're just a person who's curious, then pick this one up. Most of these books are available as audio books as well. That's how I've managed to plow through so many books uh, throughout the years, even though I have small children and like day, day time job and uh, all the other stuff that goes on in my life. O Audible is perfect for that. I think I have 300 books on Audible now. <laughs> I just bought a new one. So I noticed like, okay, I've actually <laughs> gone through quite a few books from there. But it's a great way to just get some reading into a busy day because you can do it while you walk somewhere or you commute or you're at the gym. 
uh, or when you do the dishes. That's how I do it, and it kind of adds up even if, even if it's like 10 minutes here and there. This book is a book for you if you want to know why politics divides us, if you want to explore the moral landscape, and if you want to know about the advantage of religion from an evolutionary perspective. Tons of good stuff in this one. I hope you enjoyed uh, this list. Let me know if you read any of these books or if you want to add some books to the list because I might have missed some. It's always hard to recommend books like this because uh, when you read a book it's in a certain place and a certain time and you might not have read other books before it so I'm always a bit self-conscious when I present like oh this is my favorite books but uh, because there might be even better ones because I haven't read everything in the world but these are books that made my life more enjoyable that uh, piqued my interest that just transformed my way of thinking so i hope you found something here that you want to pick up and read i'm back very soon with the next uh, category on the list i will cover philosophy human potential life skills spirituality so i will do a series of this and probably a separate playlist that you can access here once i've done it uh, i will add it here and you can just watch throughout all the videos and see uh, if you can get some inspiration for some reading to come have a good one bjorn out